So I love the new JL, but I hate the fact that they installed the license plate here on the factory bumper. It causes a huge headache for aftermarket bumpers because you don't want to design a bumper around a license plate. It makes it too tall, it makes it unproportional, it just makes it, it's terrible. So we decided we were gonna relocate the license plate right here in the middle of the spare tire. So we have this tire carry relocation bracket and what this does is it mounts your JL camera, it mounts a third brake light if you so choose, and it mounts an illumination light for the license plate, totally legal. It works with the factory tire carrier, it works with our adventure tire carrier and our shield tire carrier and it's just a really fantastic piece and I'm going to show you how to install it right now. So the first step is going to be for us to remove the spare tire and get that mount prepped. And we got to remove this inner panel inside the tailgate here and I find just kind of grabbing right here where the wiring goes in and just carefully pulling it off. works fine. So we're going to remove these top two connectors. This bottom one is for the lock or whatnot. So the first thing to do is take this little red clip and pull it all the way out. And then there's a little black button there. Go ahead and push in. And in theory, this connector comes apart just like that. So that's that one. And then for the coax for the camera, push in the white clip and then pull it straight apart in the same way, being careful not to break those. So once those are loose, we're gonna to come to the other side and we're gonna pull this wiring and this grommet right through the tailgate. Just like that, so that is loose. Now using a 13 millimeter socket, go ahead and remove the eight bolts that are holding on the factory tire mount. Then go ahead and remove the whole assembly. All right, so now we have to take apart this factory carrier so we can harvest all the wiring and the backup camera. And you're gonna do that with a T25 Torx. And up here on top, you're gonna to remove these seven Torx bits, and then on the tire carrier portion, you're gonna remove two, one on each side. So just get those all pulled out, and then you can start to pull that carrier apart. All right, once you get all those loose, you can push the studs through. Yours might be a little tighter than ours, so you may have to use a dead blow hammer for that. But go ahead and pull these studs out there. All right, now we're gonna wanna take this apart after all the screws are out. So you just go ahead and pull this off the back. And then we have to remove this clip and you would think it'd be on this side, but you'd be wrong. So we have to take our T25 again and pull these two screws here to remove the factory third brake light. Then once that's done, we can flip it over, push in the little tab, and pull this apart. So now we have this wiring here, and what we're gonna do is pull it through there, and then we'll have most of the wiring loose. Now we have to free the camera from where it's at. So go ahead and flip this back over, and you'll see these kind of black plastic pieces here inside of where the uh, studs were for the lug nut. So go ahead and push that through. And yours might make a, take a little more force than ours did, but that's the general concept. If you have to use a little brass puncher or something, that'll work fine. Then once you have this little camera mount out, you're gonna wanna grab a T8 and remove these three tiny little screws to get this camera free. Once those three screws are removed, go ahead and pull this camera out, and then there's a little pink clip there. Push that in and pull the camera free of the wiring harness, and then pull the wiring harness free. All right, so all you need from the factory tire mount is this wiring harness and this camera. We supply you with this really sweet little LED license plate light, but there's no 12 volt circuit, there's no running light circuit in the tailgate from the factory, so we have to go find one. And the easiest place is gonna be in the passenger side taillight. So we're gonna take that apart first. Let's get started on that. All right, so to get the taillight off, first you have to pull this little cover off, and you can use a dash clip tool or whatever. Just pop that guy off, and then use a T40. There's a little white Torx head screw in here, it's plastic, 
and that just takes a T40. So go ahead and loosen that all the way up. They're not on there very tight at all. Then you're going to see this kind of crazy looking plastic spring, whatever. Once that bolt is removed, the tail light comes off pretty simply. Just go ahead and pull it right off the corner there. And then we'll just connect it so we can work on the bench. Take this red clip and push it all the way out. And this might be a little difficult, but there's a black clip right here that we have to push down while at the same time pulling these clips apart. And this one fights me every single time. So there we go, got that apart. All right, so to get the wiring from the tail light to the tailgate, we have to go underneath this plastic here. So we're gonna have to take some stuff apart. We have to get this rubber out and that is covered by this plastic portion here on our soft top. So the first step is to kick out that, that C pillar part of the soft top there. And then with a T50, go ahead and remove this bolt. Once that's done, you can pull off this plastic piece here and that will give you access to this rubber gasket here. If this is underneath your hardtop, sorry, I don't have a hardtop to figure that out. You may be able to do this without pulling this gasket off. You can just pry it back to get the plastic off. But with a soft top, it's so easy just to pull this gasket. I would do it that way. Go ahead and with your tool, pop up those two little plastic Christmas tree thingies and then go ahead and pull that rubber just kind of down out of the way. Now we are going to separate this plastic here and the first step with your dash tool or a screwdriver is to pop up the seat belt trim here. Pop that up and move that out of the way. And then this is all clips right here. So you gotta be careful that you don't break anything, but we're just gonna go ahead and pull this plastic apart. That's as far as we have to go. What we're trying to get to is this grommet right here. We're gonna poke our wires through this grommet. We're gonna run them down here, and this is the harness for the tailgate. So we're just gonna follow that harness into the tailgate with our wiring for the license plate LED. So take a Phillips screwdriver and remove these three screws here and that'll take this back cover off and that'll give us a little more access to the wires that we're trying to get to here. All right, so once you get this plastic piece off here, you're gonna see a bunch of wires. What you're looking for is the blue and the purple wire and we're just gonna cut those just like that. So there it is, the blue and the purple wire here that goes to the factory connector. And then we are gonna go ahead and just strip off a little sheathing from this blue and purple wire. Be careful while you're doing this. The wires are really small and you don't want to cut any of the wire. You just want to strip about a quarter to three eighths of an inch off of the sheathing. All right, so we're going to provide you with some black and some red primary wire here. You want to strip a little bit off from these as well. And then we're going to supply you with these shrink and seal buck connectors. These things work really great. You're going to take the red wire and you're gonna twist that together with the blue wire that goes towards the connector that goes towards the vehicle. You're gonna twist those wires together. You're gonna slide that into one end of these butt connectors. Make sure that both wires are in there and you're gonna go ahead and crimp that tightly. And once you do that, you're gonna wanna make sure that that crimp is nice and tight and those wires are not gonna pull out. Then you're going to take the black wire and you're going to connect it with this purple wire. Remember, connect to the side that goes to the vehicle. Twist those together. And then insert those into the other buck connector that we supply. Make sure they're all the way in the buck connector and go ahead and crimp that connector down. Now we're going to take this purple and black wire and connect it to the purple wire that goes into the tail light. That wire is really small, so be very careful and be extra sure that you crimp it tightly. You may have to use the smaller crimp portion of your pliers. Make sure that's in there nice and tight. And then do the same thing with the red and the blue wire. Those go to the blue wire that goes into the back of the tail light. Same deal. It's pretty small. Be careful. Crimp it extra tight. 
All right, now that you have those buck connectors connected, we're gonna go ahead and shrink these tubes. So I've got a heat gun here. You can also use a hair dryer. You can use a lighter, but be careful, a lighter can actually melt it. And what you're gonna do is just work your heat gun or your hair dryer or your lighter quick over these heat shrink tubes. You're gonna see them start to shrink. Then there's a glue in here, like a hot glue that's going to melt as well. And when you see that start to seep out of the end of the connector, you know that they're shrunk enough and that everything is hot enough. On these smaller wires, they may not shrink enough. So what you can do is take your pliers and just go ahead and grab one edge of the connector there and crimp it. And that'll make a little flag looking piece on that connector and that'll squeeze that glue out. Just hold it like that so everything is nice and sealed. All right, check these connectors and make sure that they're all watertight, that you can see some glue squeeze on both sides, that those little flags are tight enough, little flags that you pinched are tight enough to seal the other end of the wires. And then go ahead and grab some electrical tape and just tidy this up, just basically so that if this new red and black wire ever gets pulled for any reason, that it's not gonna pull those connectors apart. So just use some tape just to clean this up a little bit. You can tape the connectors all the way. This is all LED and pretty low power, so we're not super worried about it, but we just don't want any corrosion here. So we're gonna feed these wires through this grommet here. So I'm gonna take a punch, or you can use a screwdriver or whatever, and I'm gonna make a hole right on the edge there, just big enough to feed those wires through. Be careful you don't actually poke the harness when you do that. Now we're gonna go ahead and reattach this plastic bracket that we removed earlier with the Phillips head screws that we removed. Now go ahead and pull that black and red wire up through the hole in the grommet that you made earlier and make sure you're going through the tail light hole in the back. Go ahead and reconnect this harness, clip the safety clip back in, and make sure you feed the loose wire up there, and then reinstall your tail light. Go ahead and reinstall the bolt that you removed from the tail light and tighten it down. Don't over tighten this, it only needs to be barely snugged. So we're gonna follow this wire harness here with our new red and black wire, but we want it inside of this factory loom here. So to do that, we're just gonna pop these clips out. You can use a screwdriver or you can use this as like a dash tool. It works really well for getting these clips out without ruining them. So we got all those out. And this one was already removed, but that's usually right in there. So now we have to get our wires in here, but we want to do that without ruining these clips because these factory clips are pretty hard to come by. So here is a little trick that you can do. So you know how zip ties work. There's a little plastic clip in there that holds the zip. What you can do is you can put a little pressure on it and you'll see that give you a little space to put a pick in. Go ahead and hold that inner clip down and you can open it right up and we can reuse this factory zip. Do the same thing for this one inside the Jeep. Now we want to pull off this factory cloth tape and do that with a pair of scissors or a pair of nips. Be sure that you don't cut through any of the wires when you do this. We'll re-tape it with just regular electrical tape. We just want to get into this nylon loom. Just like that on that side. And we'll do the same on the opposite side.
All right, now we're gonna follow this loom with our new red and black wire, and you can tape or loom this if you want in here. It's gonna be all hidden under the, the plastic, so we're not really worried about it getting damaged, but if you're super picky about stuff like that, go ahead and get some small wiring loom and loom it up, but we're just gonna slide it in through this nylon sheath here. And go ahead and pull it through the opposite side. Now we're going to use a couple zip ties or some tape, whatever you want, to just tape these wires to this factory harness just so it doesn't move around. And then we are going to retape this factory nylon loom. on both sides. Reinstall the zips that you pulled earlier and you may have to take your pick and push that plastic piece down just a little bit in case they don't grab. Now reinstall this harness back on all of its pegs and the clips back in their respective holes. All right, so go ahead and zip tie this red and black wire to the wiring harness in the bottom of your tailgate. Zip tie it or you could use tape too. And I know this is a ridiculous amount of work for a license plate light, but if it's legal in your state, this is way better than getting a ticket because I'm not gonna pay your ticket. So, you know, that's all on you. So once you get this red and black wire all the way to this side, you can just let it hang right there. We'll work with that later. Now we're gonna go ahead and put this interior trim back together in the exact same way that it came apart. It all snaps right back in. Make sure it's underneath this rubber gasket here. Make sure all the clips are snapped. And then you can go ahead, put the tail light bolt cover back on. Remember these little plastic clips that hold on the tailgate rubber. If you remove those, those can push right back in again. And then if you have a soft top, reinstall this bracket with the hardware that you removed and a T50 torch bit and then snap your soft top back into place make sure it's all tight and that's it for that good as new all right so we're going to provide you with this third brake light this led light it's pretty nice because it's for our tire carriers when you order our tire carrier but if you want to use it now it's fine just unbolt the factory light and we can start to bolt this guy together we're going to give you some button head bolts and those are going to be tightened down with a 2.5 millimeter hex wrench and a 7 millimeter box end wrench and every once in a while we found that the holes in these lights are just a little too small for the bolts that we use but we don't want to use smaller bolts so go ahead and just drill those out with a 5 30 seconds or even a 3 16 drill bit or whatever you have it's really thin plastic it's easy to drill it's not going to be a problem whatsoever and that bolt will fit down in there so tighten the bolts on both sides there you're going to go ahead and wire this into the factory wiring i'm going to show you how to do that inside all right so here's the connector for the factory third brake light we're going to need to cut that off Ooh, here's one i prepared earlier <laughs> so once that's cut off we will take these wires and we will strip them. Just like that. So after you get the vehicle side harness stripped, go ahead and stick it through the hole in this bracket. And don't forget to do this or you're gonna be sad like I was five minutes ago when I forgot to do this and I had to do it all over again. So slide that through the hole in that bracket and then go ahead and take the butt connectors that we give you and crimp just one side. 
the factory wires are white and black here. So we are just going to stick these on one side. Now go and grab the third brake light that we give you and you're going to be compelled to wire it with the white to the white green and the black to black, but don't do that. This is a trailer LED and they're wired with white as ground and black as battery positive. So we're actually going to wire these in backwards. So black is going to go to white green, which is the brake light positive on this vehicle. Go ahead and slide that in and crimp it. And then white is going to go to black. Black is the ground in the vehicle, white is the ground on this light. Go ahead and crimp that as well. Make sure you're, oh see, look, bad crimp. You always got to check those crimps and make sure that they're tight or you're going to have a bad connection. So usually when they pull out that easy you can slide it right back in again and then re-crimp it. Perfect. Go ahead and grab your heat gun, or your hair dryer, or your lighter and heat shrink these butt connectors. Ha, <laughs> I said butt. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tape this up just for aesthetics. Uh, it should be perfectly sealed without the tape, but that way the whole harness here is the same color. All right, now we are gonna take the grommet end, the end that goes in the vehicle, and we are gonna take a punch or a pick or a screwdriver or whatever you've got here and we are going to punch a hole right there in the bottom of this rubber grommet without punching into the wire. So, you know, you can peel this back, watch your fingers, be really careful, and open it up just big enough to fish this red and black wire through, but small enough so that the rubber will reseal around them. And then once you get that hole done, maybe just one at a time, push that wire through there. And you can kind of see it right there in the end. And you can even use your pick at this point and just kind of sacrifice the end of the wire and push it through. But make sure that you clip that end of the wire off once you pull it through there. All right, there's one, and for the second one, what we can do is take just a little bit of tape and tape the second wire to the first very tightly, but not with so much tape that it creates this huge extra diameter. And then we can pull this through may have to feed it through on both sides, but and once that tape gets through on this side, go ahead and grab it. Pull both through. Now go ahead and pull them through equally and then most likely you'll probably have to cut some off because you may have sacrificed the sheathing when you pulled on them. But go ahead and pull them so that the ends of these wires are just about even with the connectors. So it'll look just like that and then we'll go ahead and tape this side of the grommet just to keep everything nice looking, even though this is going to be buried inside the tailgate. Just like that. Now we're going to take our infamous license plate light and we are going to line it up with the end of the connector for the camera. Just about right there. Go ahead and cut it. and strip the wires. These are super small, just like the factory JK light wires, so be careful when you strip them. Just like that. 
strip our red and black wires that you just ran through that grommet. Like that. Take two more of the crimp and seal connectors. That one's a little long, so we can just trim it up a little bit. Crimp them on the wire side here. Go ahead and connect the license plate light wires, black to black and red to red on these crimp connectors. And be careful when you crimp them, these wires are tiny. So you may have to use the smaller crimpers on your pliers, but that could damage this shrink sheathing. So just be super extra careful while you're doing it. Sometimes if you accidentally punch a little hole in the sheathing with your crimpers, just like that right there, once you heat it, it'll close right back up. So keep that in mind as well. Now we're going to go ahead and tape up this harness. And we provide you with some loom to cover this up, or you can just do a really great tape job. And that'll look awesome as well. Entirely up to you. At some point you're going to want to keep the split between the brake light and the license plate light and the camera coaxial. With the camera coaxial and the license plate light you can tape almost up to the top. Maybe leave uh, five inches untaped. All right, so this is the mount that we need to sandwich between the tire and the factory tire mount. But unfortunately, yeah, this camera tube is in the way, so we've got to get rid of it. But don't worry, our license plate bracket for the JL includes a spot for your backup camera, so we won't need this at all. We want to cut this really flush so that we can uh, mount this on there and not have any gaps or anything. So I'm going to use a Sawzall. You can use, uh, you can use a hacksaw, whatever you want to use. It's plastic with a little bit of metal inside of it. So I think the Sawzall is going to do a great job. You want to make sure that you have it nice and smooth so this sits flush. So let's get that started. All right, so the way this is cutting, it may be magnesium. And the thing about magnesium is you don't really want to light it on fire. A uh, fine tooth would probably be a good idea. All right, so we got this all smoothed out here, and after I'm grabbing this, this is super duper light. It's definitely magnesium or some blend, and I may be being way too worried about it, and someone's gonna comment and blow, like, oh, it's not that, and there's no danger. That's fine. Um, I wouldn't use a grinder if it were my Jeep, so use a hacksaw, use a sawzall like I did. It's gonna be fine. And I understand if you don't wanna do this, if you buy our tire carrier that actually mounts on the bumper, the gate swinging one, or the adventure that swings on its own, you don't have to. You don't have to worry about that at all. You just take this thing off, throw it in the trash. It'll be easier. So at any rate, now that that is nice and smooth, we're going to put the stuff back together here. All right, now you're going to have to cut this same little tube off from the spacer that the camera was mounted to before. Use the same method. This is plastic. You don't have to worry about it catching on fire. And then go ahead and pop that up where it was before. Grab the original studs for the spare tire and slide those through. Then use that T25 and put the original two bolts back in. All right, now we're gonna assemble this license plate and backup camera relocation bracket. The first thing we're gonna grab is this bracket right here with the hole in it. You can see the bend kind of faces backwards. And we're gonna grab the camera right here and you'll see it has three ears. The top portion is missing an ear. And it's gonna be confusing because that sticker is on what I think is upside down. But at any rate, you're gonna put it in just like this with that ear facing down the blank spot on top. Camera through the hole there. You're gonna grab this bracket right here with the square in it and that's gonna go over the top of this and that's gonna kind of slide right on that camera and sandwich the camera between the two brackets. Now we're gonna grab this license plate bracket and this whole situation is gonna go behind that, just like that. We're gonna give you some quarter inch stainless button heads. Go ahead and slide those through all three layers of bracket. You may have to wiggle them around just a little bit to get them through. 
and then there's some quarter inch flange nuts that go on the back there. Go ahead and loosely install those and once everything is lined up and looks really good, take a 5 30 seconds hex and tighten everything down and once it's all tightened down, your camera should be nice and tight sandwiched between those metal plates. Now we're going to grab our license plate and that's going to set on this bracket like this. Two more quarter inch button head stainless fasteners, flange nuts on the back. Just like that. All right, once you get this wiring harness built, you're gonna to wanna to put it back through this slot on your factory carrier. And it's got these little ears and they're not really necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip these off with a pair of snips just to make our lives easier. We've actually made this harness a little thicker. So it's not gonna fall out of here, trust me. So we'll just open that plastic up just a little bit. And that'll make putting our harness in here a lot easier. Now slide this in and then make sure you have enough wire for your camera to come through. And for your third brake light here, if you're still using this third brake light. And you always have the option of removing this and then installing our third brake light down here as well. All right, once you get that wire ran through, you can go ahead and reinstall this factory tire carrier using the factory bolts. All right, now we are gonna put this wiring harness back in here, the larger connectors first, and then the smaller connectors. All right, once you get all that wiring done there, you're gonna pull your illumination light for the license plate and your coaxial cable here for your backup camera through that center hole, and then add our inner plate here for the relocation bracket. All right, now you're gonna take your spare tire and you're gonna slide it over this bracket. Make sure you don't pinch your wiring. Before you push that down, go ahead and pull that license plate light and your camera mount through just like that. Now go ahead and install your lug nuts and torque down your spare tire. All right, now we're gonna take this bracket that we put together earlier and grab the camera coaxial and snap that onto the backup camera. Then we're gonna peel the adhesive tape off our illumination light there and stick it right in the center just like that. All right, now take this outer piece here and set it on top of the inner slotted piece. And we got two more of these quarter inch stainless steel bolts and flange nuts. It's easier to start this inner one first, kind of snug it up. Then you can press this into place and then install the outer one. All right, now once you kind of get this where you want, you can go ahead and tighten this up with a 5 30 seconds Allen. All right, this goes on the bottom of the plate with some more of those quarter inch stainless bolts. All right, now if you use our third brake light and this illumination light with the factory camera, it makes removing this really, really simple. You're gonna disconnect the wiring inside the tailgate and just pull that whole loom right through the center of your wheel and pull this bracket off as one piece. If you're using the factory brake light, all the wiring is kind of tucked up inside the carrier. So you're gonna have to add some spade disconnects or something between this illumination light and the wiring. It's just up to you entirely. If you decide that you're gonna pull this wiring harness all the way through the wheel with the third brake light and everything, I wouldn't install the wire loom between the carrier and the tailgate like I showed you earlier. I would just push the wire loom right outside the side hole of the tire carrier. That way you can unplug it inside the tailgate, pull it out through that grommet, and just pull the whole harness right through the center hole of this wheel. It's gonna make it really, really simple. It's entirely up to you what you wanna do and what your needs require. I just wanted to leave that note here. All right, that's it. And I know that wiring seemed like a lot of work for just an illumination lamp. So maybe check in your state, see if you can get away without it. It's pretty cool, I think it's worth it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this product or any product at JCR Offroad, don't hesitate to email us at tech at jcroffroad.com or call us 269-353-1184. Thanks for watching and thanks for being part of the JCR Offroad family.